Welcome to the Sunday Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, January the 26th, 2020, and we have a great watch list for this coming week. Miss Vegas. Yes, good morning, everybody. We're going to talk about Costco, Facebook, Visa, Tesla, LLNW, and APHA. So, you know, before we get started with all these stocks, I mean, you know, the, the news that's been ongoing all weekend and also the last couple of trading days, you know, we keep hearing about the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, this is a virus that uh, does affect, you know, mammals, uh, birds, also with humans. It's, you know, respiratory infection. Um, you know, they're, they're typically mild, but also could be very lethal. Uh, we keep hearing that the cases of uh, people affected with the virus in China has grown to over 2,000. Um, there's actually a case in Toronto where a, a gentleman that was traveling is in isolation right now with the coronavirus and um, is seeking treatment. So, you know, this can, you're going to hear about this uh, probably the whole week. Um, and, you know, some of these um, talks will actually create a bit of a pop in some of the biotech stocks. Um, that we're not going to really cover off today, uh, but it will uh, create a pop in some stocks. And uh, we also see, you know, the chat with all this has actually created a bit of a pullback and a market downtick uh, that we saw also on Friday. So, you know, that doesn't mean that the stocks are bad. It just means right now this is what's happening. And so some of the stocks are pulling back and uh, sometimes it's a great opportunity to get the dips. So moving on, we'll just start talking about Costco. Um, so, you know, we do have earnings in Costco, still not uh, anytime soon, uh, beginning of March, but definitely wanted to mention that uh, Costco stock has surged to all-time highs. There was an upgrade by Oppenheimer. They've upgraded the stock to an outperform, and they actually say that the stock that they're giving at a target is about 336. Uh, now, one of the things that I really like about Costco, as you guys know, I mean, everyone goes there for the deals. I mean, you go in for one thing, you come out with 10. Um, you know, they do offer the consumer really great prices. You know, the store is designed to keep overhead costs as low as possible. And, you know, part of that is that they don't have salespeople walking around. They don't decorate the store. I mean, when you're walking in there, you can see it's a total big warehouse. Um, they also have uh, really good deals. They try to keep their model very simple so that they can generate lots of cash. And uh, that's the best way for them to work. They're not a margin company is what the CEO talked about on TV the other day when he was on Mad Money with Jim Cramer. Um, he really reiterated that we are a volume company. So, you know, they obviously charge the consumers like us an annual fee of $60 for the membership. And they said that, you know, they haven't really increased that fee. They may decide down the road to do that if they add new pieces, for example, additional benefits that would come with the membership. So they would want to justify to people like us why they are increasing the fee. So the other thing, too, which I was really surprised when I was listening um, to the CEO talk, uh, I was really surprised when he said that, you know, the staff get paid hourly wages of around $25 an hour up to 29. And they've had such long-term employees working there for more than 10 years. So he talked about how they always believe that they should never earn its profit on the back of the people and that the employees are rewarded with benefits. And, um, you know, I think that's great as a company. So they have long-term workers there that want to be there. Uh, and I think that's amazing. So if you're looking for a job, Honestly, you should probably look at working at Costco. I'm just really shocked that they pay so well. So that's fantastic to hear. So, Jim, let's hear about the Costco chart because we love Costco. All right. We're, we're definitely at a three-year uh, three year high here. Last week, we hit 314.28. So let's pull up the yearly. Beautiful yearly high from 205.75 all the way to 310. We kind of hit that top four times last week at that 314.28 area. So let's pull up the 20 day and see if that tells us anything that I missed. Got a little resistance right there at the 312.40. Let me put it right about right in there. 
the internet support level is no lower than 305 so we're way above that right now what we need to do is have this 31036 hold we did close at 31051 and right now we're at 31048 and the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 31384 to new highs and then you see we had that yearly high at 314.28 so that's obvious that's going to be your long and that's going to be cost no lower than 310.36 so we're going to have a big gap to fill down here and let the trend run or if we go ahead and stay in this channel between 310 and 313.84 cost and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Facebook Yes, well, you know what? Facebook uh, is uh, scheduled uh, soon for earnings, and I don't really know the date. Do you know the date, Jim, for Facebook? Oh, yeah, I do. It's going to be on Wednesday after the close, so stay tuned on Facebook earnings, uh, which will be on Wednesday after the close. By the way, super, super busy earnings week. It's going to be really crazy. Um, so just to talk about Facebook, just wanted to mention that uh, they are taking on Apple with a new Face ID feature. And this is for their Messenger app. And what, so what they're looking to do is they want to have their own version of what they call the, you know, Apple Face ID, but it's going to be Facebook's own Face ID that they're making. And they're making it with their own technology and their own algorithms. Uh, they are saying that it's not going to be stored on their servers and uh, similar to some issues they had before with saving data, which was part of the privacy issues. Um, they're intended to, uh, this technology is going to be to lock up the messenger application. And uh, it's unclear if they're going to use it also for their, also their WhatsApp uh, feature that they own, um, messaging feature. So well, I guess we'll hear more about that, um, but definitely, um, you know, that's a feature that they are working on and uh, obviously they want to have, uh, to, you know, end-to-end -end encryption. They want to have, a, you know, additional security. And, uh, you know, we know that the company has made a play for the privacy space, promising users that end-to-end -end encryption, especially with WhatsApp, has done more than any other platform and uh, eventually that there, it's going to be coming to Instagram and Messenger. So uh, we'll see what happens with Facebook. And it'll be a very interesting earnings report Wednesday after hours. So we'll see what is the latest on Facebook. And I guess um, we'll see if they can answer and respond to some of that speculation, if there's going to be any details uh, with regards to their facial recognition uh, updates. So it's called Face ID. That's what they're calling it. So, Jim, let's hear about Facebook. All right. Well, we did have a yearly high of 222.75 last week, and it did have a pretty nice little pullback. Closed at 217.94. We had a resistance that we did have to break at one time here, 206.78, with that long of that candle wick right there around the 208.50 area. Then we have another little support right down here. I'm going to suggest looking over in this area right in here. Right around the 212.96, 213 area. Then you had a little gap in here. It looks like she held that gap pretty well. So I'm going to magnify this up just to see. And that was that had to hold that support area right here at 217.48. And we did. You see where the base of that candle held above it? So that was a, so far so good. But there's a little gap that it, it would have to replace if that didn't hold. So we got to kind of watch which direction this stock's going to be turning. I think it did have a significant pullback for a reversal. If we do come out bullish this week, if not, we could be pulling back into this little gap and at three support levels at 213. 215.18 and at 217.48 and the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be right here at the 222.58 area and that's Facebook and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be V for Verizon that's my victory call that's not Verizon Jim that's Visa yeah that's what I said Visa, Visa. 
You said Bryson. Oh, I'm so, excuse me. <laughs> Slip the tongue. <laughs> I keep getting them too um, mixed up. Yeah, you know, people get them mixed up. That's all right. Yep, so Visa. Visa has earnings on Thursday after the close. And uh, we also had some news on Visa a couple weeks ago, yep. uh, which I liked this news. I mean, you know, Visa is uh, has made an investment in um, Plaid. And, uh, you know, Visa is the largest player in credit cards. And they're moving away beyond just credit card swiping. Uh, they're getting into, you know, more of the financial technology sector. They are, they've acquired this new fintech startup. Can you believe $5.3 billion, um, including $4.9 billion of cash and consideration for the rest in retention equity and deferred equity? You know, the company was valued at about $2.65 billion back in 2018. And what it does, it allowed individuals to connect their bank accounts uh, with different platforms, uh, such as PayPal, Mint, Acorn. And um, this deal is going to close in the next three to six months. Uh, it's a super busy 2019. Uh, you know, Visa, everyone thinks about Visa as a card processor, but it's actually trying to rebrand and re uh, refer to itself as a network of networks. So rather than just connecting payment players that just want to make a card purchase, they're trying to tap into the fintech experience and they're looking to provide a suite of services to developers. So they're moving away from just being focused on payments to actually being focused on the movement of the funds for any purpose. So this is why this Plaid is the leading financial data network in the U.S., um, so, you know, there's so many things also that Visa is doing and, uh, you know, one of the things is they're buying access to other networks from where they can actually connect Visa direct. And that was a comment made by Joseph Foresi from Cantor Fitzgerald. So we do expect that Plaid will help Visa expand its growth financial data network business across the U.S. and also brought in this business overseas. And this was mentioned in the conference call that Visa did have. And so this will help also reduce the company's dependence on the traditional transactional model. And this was mentioned by Moshe Khatri in an email that he sent out to MarketWatch. So, you know, Plaid has emerged as the leader in enabling FinTech adoption. And we believe that the deal does provide optionality for Visa to not only enable uh, Finch profileration, but also profit from it in so many different ways, which was also mentioned by the analyst Sanjay Sakrani. So I think we'll see that assuming the deal does close, um, we will see, a, I think, a longer opportunity for the company. This company, Plaid, has an appetite for fintech players, and I think it's going to be competitive with companies out there like the PayPal's. So uh, it'll be interesting too to see how Ma how MasterCard per, uh, does, if any, do any additional acquisitions as well. So keep Visa on your watch uh, because they have earnings uh, this coming Thursday after the close. So Jim, let's hear about Visa because we've been trading this and we've done really well on this stock. Well, this was a beautiful call out we did last week in this room that, uh, and then we've pulled back to about 205 here at the end of close Friday on, on Visa. And I really did like this. And we're at a yearly high of that 210. We did call that when it was down here around 200. So this thing could go to 210 and bam, we went 210, 13. So let's look at the 20. We did have a lower high that came Friday after that pullback on Thursday. Did bounce up a little bit, but that higher was just a little bit lower than the previous high of the year so we, we are a descending pattern right here and it did pull back to a to a support level right around this 205 area 20426 so that's what it needs to hold if not it can pull back to this 20178 and that'd be a real strong buy with your real strong buy right under 200 and the resistance if it decides to move on up First one's going to be right there, right around the 205.83. We 
get that right there 20589 and then you got this spot right here at the 20785 area and if we can break that we can go up to that all year double top area and that'll be at 20964 that's the triple that's the third resistance and the first support low one under 200 20178 and then we got to try to break this pivot point area and maybe create a new channel and that was really a nice call last week you see on the 20 day chart we had like a triple bottom down here at 185 185 186 and bam so the next one we're going to talk about is going to be tesla yeah well you know what i heard or read on instagram that uh Jay Leno and uh, Elon Musk were seen driving uh, Tesla, the new Cybertruck, driving around uh, Los Angeles. And uh, someone videotaped it and put it on Instagram. So I guess uh, he's showing him the model. As you guys know, you know, Jay Leno, he's a huge car collector. Yep. So, I mean, you know, he just loves, uh, I'm not shocked to hear that story, but it was actually uh, true. So... Um, just to mention to the, uh, cyber truck, not the cyber truck, but the, uh, transport trucks, uh, looks like, uh, that is, looks like it's coming on the road. Let me just see if I can pull it up here. There was an article that, uh, you know, they've accelerated, you know, Tesla is also getting into the semi development and there might be a limited release this coming year, 2020. And they have a, lot, a small lot of what they call BEV trucks coming as well, but a limited competition for what they call the Class 8 Tesla semi-market. So the question is, is there going to be additional cost of diesel for these really big trucks? I mean, it is definitely looking really good for Tesla. I mean, I saw a picture of the truck. I think Jim can show you a picture. Um, they look really nice for a transport truck. And, um, you know, part of the reason that, you know, Tesla's just nonstop, I mean, they're just coming out with new and new things. So if they were to release, let's say, this semi later this year, I think that um, we could see some more action uh, with the Tesla, with the actual Tesla stock. So we see that it's had already a beautiful run, a, a bit, of, you know, obviously a pullback. Um, but these semi trucks are going to be having a base price, by the way, of $150,000 to $200,000. Um, and they are expected, though, to save a lot of money on fuel. And that is what's going to sell these trucks, not just the look and the comfort for the drivers. Because, you know, remember these drivers that drive these semis? I mean, they're on the road. They live on the road. And so they need to be comfortable. And to know that you don't have to fuel up is a huge saving for the companies or owners. A lot of owners that own their own semis and, um, you know, basically they, they drive the uh, contents for other companies. So that would be a savings for them and which, you know, could help increase their own business. So I think we'll hear more about this. So I think, you know, Tesla is a stock to just keep watching. I think any dips in my personal opinion are a good a, a huge advantage to just accumulate the stock and just not sell it uh you know again you know i'm not a financial advisor so speak to uh someone uh obviously i speak to a professional if you're thinking to seriously invest in tesla but you know we have to remember when jim and i talk about things here you know we talk about the different changes that are coming within the tesla industry we look at uh you know the fact that tesla has transitioned from a company that was not able to, I guess, uh, perform to actually a company that's performing. So I recommend that uh, you speak to a professional if you're gonna look to invest long-term, but at the same time, my opinion, I like Tesla for any dips it gives, I think it's a gift. So Jim, let's hear what you think about Tesla because oh, you did yes. a beautiful trade on this one too last week. Yep, now Tesla, uh, this is one I was kind of watching it and buying together and watching they were the way they who which one I figured had the most strength, even though the bears are trying to attack each each and every one of them, or each one of these two, and it was I was kind of pondering that Tesla had a little bit more mustard than Bind did, but Bind did the same thing. It kind of had a bad pullback day, but they were running back and forth 
neck to neck and we had to hold this support level of 563.45 that was the previous base on that previous day candle right here that was important that we held above that and we did at 564.82 so the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be right up here right around the 573.46 if we can get back up there we're going to hit my goal of 600 definitely this year I think it that 593.30 area maybe would be the spot to look for there's another spot right in here and we're jot that at 581.27 so we need to hold this support level at 563.45 if not it's going to pull back into this little channel right in here and that lower support was right there at 546.89 and that's what we'd have to hold so if we can keep above that, that would be great to, to run it up to that $600 level. Again, low support, 546 89 563.45 has to hold to keep it in this channel. And the resistance to break is going to be that 573.46. And I'm just going to look at the daily one minute to see if I missed anything. It can run up a little bit higher to this 565 but so far you see it was kind of descending pattern into hours after hours and it pulled back from that 565 to 559 you have to kind of play it like the bears are on it but you, you're also if you play it right you can scalp this for a nice little dollar scalp in the option land if you scalp it on a lotto play or even in to the next week and that's going to be tesla the next one we're going to talk about after that is going to be LLNW. You know what? LLNW Limelight Networks, I have not traded the stock in a while. Um, the earnings is coming out this week, towards the end of the week. However, you know, Limelight Networks is, they're into technology. They're an internet information provider. And um, I really like the weekly charts. I'm kind of liking it for a continuation this week. Uh, obviously, not hold into earnings in particular, um, but uh, they do have so many different things that they work on, and they're into also cloud-based uh, management and bot management protection. Um, so you should check out their website if you like technology. Um, they have a huge edge cloud, and um, they do a lot of uh, content for digital content delivery as well. They have cloud security. So they're very involved. I mean, Nintendo is one of their clients, Napster, Marvel. I mean, those are some of their clients that uh, deal with um, Limelight Networks. But I do like this weekly chart. And the reason I like it, and Jim will talk about the chart, I mean, it has new 52-week highs on the chart. It also had a nice pocket pivot on the daily and a beautiful close actually on Friday. And so I am seeing some strength for sure in this particular stock. So definitely want to see a continuation. So maybe Jim, you can let us know from your thoughts on the chart. What can we see next and kind of like what is considered low support and what resistances can we see? Yeah, I'm seeing right around that $5 area. 505 I'm looking at a three-year chart three-year high was at 605 on a weekly and you have that kind of that first support that lower support the one we had to break was this one right here it's a 539 area so we're going to call that like a pivot point that's going to mm -hmm. be your decision maker if it wants to move up move up to the right under six bucks or if it wants to pull back below five and at 505, and we got another one right here at 482. And then a low, low, low support right down here. And I'm going to raise it up just a little bit into this area right around 469. So that 469 is going to be your low. That critical area if right there at 505 has to hold. We're at a pivot point and resistance that we need to break. Is going to be this 539, and we did. We are at 546. So if we can break past that long on the three-year high between six dollars and 605, and that's LLNW. 
And then we got one more, and that's going to be APHA. Yes. So let's talk about this uh, Afria. So, yep. you know, we had some really good news about this company on Friday morning, pre market. I got the news from our amazing team at the Trade Exchange News, and uh, those guys are on the ball. And um, the news on Afria was that, you know, first of all, Afria is into the healthcare, they're into drug manufacturing. Um, you can read more about them if you want, if you want to go to their website, afriainc.com. But, you know, they are also a leader in the cannabis industry, and uh, they are also very involved in strategic partnerships and global expansion. Um, and so they have different things, they have different brands as well. So the Afria Inc., you know, it's been around since 2014. And, um, you know, they're looking, they're into the pharmaceutical grade medical cannabis. Um, so what I want to mention here with Afria, and, and this is what was interesting with the news. So first of all, it was not a small amount of money. Uh, this was a $100 million investment. And um, the individual that has invested in Afria is undisclosed so we don't know who it is and they're not you know they're not going to share that um so that's quite interesting about the actual company so the chart is not the prettiest however with this investment of a hundred million dollars from an undisclosed investor um that is big news so i think that you know why would someone put in a hundred million dollars into a company if they don't think it's val it's worth anything. So I, you know, the stock is actually, you know, five dollars and what forty six cents um, is what the close was. So it's still probably undervalued at this point, and there's probably going to be um, maybe some. Obviously, what are they going to do with that money? So they're obviously going to be using it probably for some partnerships, maybe some more research. I guess remains to be seen. Uh, but Jim, I'd like to hear your thoughts on um, Afria because stocks kind of, you know, pulled back at one point. And uh, with this news, I think this could create a potential opportunity for people that may want to look at this maybe longer term, actually. I mean, it could have a bit of a pop. I'm surprised it didn't have the run that it should have on Friday yeah. with that news. Um, but you know what? Maybe people are going to read about the news on the weekend because maybe they didn't see the news Friday um, and maybe want to look at a PHA a little closer. So what are your thoughts on this actual stock? Well, I'm looking at the yearly chart, three-year chart right here. And if I look at that on the three-year, I'm looking at a year three-year pivot point right around the 759 area. So if I pull this up on a yearly now, let's see where we are on a yearly. Yearly, that's probably where I would bring it down just a little bit lower, right down here to right around the 664. So that would be my targeted area for resistance. We'd have to break this 200, and that's right there around 608. Support level was right down here at 519, and it looks to me like it pulled back there into close we'll pull that up on a 20 day here in a second then we got another little support area right in here and then another one right here so those are all going to be critical and then a resistance level right in here bam so let's pull this up to a 20 day We got a lower support right down here at 496. So that's going to be kind of my 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 serious low support. I hate to see it go any lower. It starts getting around that five bucks. I probably might want to try to pick this up. We did have three different lower high higher lows. See, I mean, we had a higher higher high right there. We had a higher high right there, and a higher high right there. And so we had that. 625 there friday morning then she done nothing but pulled back and run to that 200 found pretty solid support there so we got a little resistance level right in here 
and I'm going to put that right there at that 538. That's what we need to try to break to bring it up to this next 563 area. And those are your three resistances, and these are your three two supports. We're going to add one more right down here. Bam. 472 going to be your low entry with your second support at 496, and that first one 519 with a resistance that's a pivot point then you have your three resistances above it on the 20 day and that's got to break at 538 to bring it up here to 617 but the hard resistance is going to be right here where we had that triple top area right there at 585 APHA and that's it for the market report with Vegas and Jim yes all right and you know what uh you know this company you know, they're going to use this money to improve also the balance sheet. So that's really important. You know, yep. if you're looking to buy the stock or, or hold, you know, a lot of these marijuana stocks have pulled back a lot from where they were at one point. Um, that's a good, that's a good point that they're improving the balance sheet. So something to keep in mind as well, if you're thinking to, you know, invest in the stock. Okay. So that is our market report. Uh, just a reminder that, uh, you can follow us on our social media, on both StockTwits and Twitter. Uh, we do post uh, trading ideas in real time when we have the time to share something. Uh, we were able to share quite a few actually last week and uh, very happy that uh, people did message and say that they made uh, good money on some of the ideas that we did share. So congratulations for uh, those trades and um also, happy to report we got over a thousand followers now on Twitter. So thank you for yeah. everyone to following and subscribing. And a reminder that on our website, ilovestocks.com, you can sign up for the newsletter, which will be sent out later today with a couple more uh, picks that are probably for some swing trades or some continuation stocks to watch for. We'll be putting about three of them on there. So um, might want to sign up to get this newsletter for free. And that'll be out later today. So go to our website and just enter your email and you'll be ready to receive that newsletter later today with your three free picks. So we wish everyone a great trading week. Thank you for following. Smash the like bucket button. I was going to say the bucket. <laughs> and, uh, you know, please uh, follow, subscribe. And uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you guys again. Have a great week. Jim, anything else to add? No, that one. I was shocked to see 1,011 followers on Twitter. I mean, that that's that was nice. <laughs> I was happy yeah. to see that. But yeah. yeah, this is it for the market report. And always remember, keep these on watch all throughout the week. They might not hit our achievement for the first week, but they might pull back and hit our support for the next day or something. And you might get in at a better. When I mention them lower supports, those are ideas that maybe you can get in at a better price. But we're definitely bullish on them. So that's it for the market report. Today's date, January 26, 2020. And let's have a great week. I love stocks.